Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is a special afternoon meeting of the Planning Commission, uh, April 30th meeting. Uh, welcome, and I'd like to call the meeting to order. May we have a roll call? Commissioner Sai? Here. Commissioner Woodward? Present. Uh, Commissioner Amir? Here. Chair Williams? Present. Thank you. Uh, before we turn to the um, uh, noticed agenda items, I'd like to give anyone in the uh, here with us in person or online an opportunity to speak to any matter that does not appear on the agenda. If anyone would like to speak, please step up to the podium or raise your hand online. Okay, see no one in the room who wishes to speak. Do we have anyone online? Chair Williams, there is no one online that would like to speak. Terrific. Um, let's move on to the... Uh, portion of the agenda where we hear if there are any uh, updates from staff, we have a chance to hear those. We have none for this afternoon. Great. Um, and I, as I understand it, we do not have minutes. I, I believe review of the minutes of March 27th appears on the agenda for today, but the minutes were not ready for today's meeting. So we'll defer those to a future meeting. And that will enable us to go right to the public hearing items for today. Um, the first one, is uh, public hearing item one, um, is our consideration of a conditional use permit to operate and manage chipper days. And I'll just uh, read out um, the proposal that's before us. So it's a five annual chipper days that will take place on the second Saturday of May, June, July, August, and September. Um, the uh, public portion, as I understand it, will take place from nine to four. Yes. Uh, and then there will be some cleanup uh, from four to five. Yes. Um, and this will be a three year, the request is for a three year uh, conditional use permit that then is subject to review uh, um, prior to any sub subsequent extension. Um, and uh, chipper days provide an opportunity for residents to bring their cut vegetation to Black East Pasture for free removal to meet defensible space requirements uh, as instructed by the Tiburon Fire District to comply with the fire code, the state fire code, and ordinance number 129. Um, I don't uh, believe we have, we need a staff report today, but so, so we don't really need to have a staff report. I think most of you would do remember that last year we had chipper days. Um, we spent some time discussing the conditions. And the only thing that we see today in the staff report and within the request is that there's an extension of Monday, Tuesday to allow for the cleanup. Wasn't enough sufficient time to have a Sunday at five o'clock with Mill Valley Refuse and Mill Valley Refuse has agreed to come and do the extra pickups. So this just simply allows them to do more cleanup and pickup of the vegetation. So that's really the, the main change in the existing conditional use permit. And that's if we have other, I'm here for questions. And so is um, Fire Marshal. Fire Marshal. See, I don't know your title, Lantier. I just call you, you know. That Matthew's guy. dad. That guy, yes. <laughs> it's okay. Great. And I do recall reading in the staff report it, that's in the record um, that there have been no complaints um, in the time since the two years, I believe, since we um, approved Chipper Days. I have received none. Great. Yeah. Um, okay. So we'll, um, I, I do, I, 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 I'm not sure if you have a presentation or if you're just here to answer questions. No, really, nothing's changed. And I did not prepare a uh, PowerPoint. What I, did provide you is what we call our super tally. And that is just uh, the numbers that we track year to year um, since starting Chipper Day in 2019. Um, it is working. Um, and last year we did not reach our million pound goal, but we were pretty close. Um, but, uh, you know, we love seeing um, this thing grow and we get more and more people participating. Um, it's just an overall, um, the single most important thing we do for wildfire preparedness. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and just so uh, any questions from the commissioners? Um, Chair, I only have one question for the marshal. When you selected the dates that I think are in uh, May through September, did you um, look at whether or not those Saturdays conflict with any other big events that could, for example, create traffic issues, things like that? We have, uh, we started this in 2019 and it was just kind of a um, reaction to the North Bay fires, et cetera. 
as we've grown, we've started to realize that there's some um, youth soccer and potentially lacrosse in the early part of the season. But it's uh, we try to make it a catchy second Saturday of the month, May through September. That's kind of what we're trying to stick to. Um, so it, we haven't discovered anyone in particular other than the sports teams utilizing McKegney. Um, and we try to direct them to the better park or the best parking if they're running late to a game is typically across the street at Del Mar. But um, we do have, you know, interaction with folks looking for to park uh, for those events. But it really hasn't been a problem. I haven't heard anything from those organizations. We did reach out um, in the end of last year saying, hey, well, this is what we're doing again. If you want to talk about, you know, scheduling, we'd be happy to. So that's the best we can do. And I haven't heard anything. And just to clarify, you've already, you've had experience working with the soccer, with the families and uh, uh, teams that um, have shown up in the last couple of years. Yeah, the parents, the issue. yeah, it's typically the the out of town folks that are coming, um, and I wouldn't say very far out of town, but they're coming in to play the Tiburon Peninsula youth soccer. I'd probably mess that up, but I played that back when I was a child. Um, it was a TPSL then, but anyhow, um, We've had no issues other than giving them direction and, and you know, they've been pretty gracious. So a quick clarification on the um, uh, uh, extra pickup um, during the week. Um, you, you'll, it sounds like on Sundays, you'll do some general cleanup and, and, and move out the sort of close down the public uh, right. chipper days. And yep. then the, the, the Monday, Tuesday is just for um, the, the refuse company to come and Right. Away. Yeah. So we have to kind of guess on how many bins we need because we don't know who's coming. We don't haven't really figured out an RSVP system right. that is effective yet, but uh, some days are better than others. And so sometimes we will exceed those those bins and we'll have a, a larger pile, which then we have to then rely on our, our co-sponsor, the uh, public works department to come down and fill the new boxes that are brought in. So we found that adding that extra day helps Mill Valley Refuse tremendously because of their staffing. They do this completely free. So it's amazing. Great. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Just one on, um, you had mentioned last year not hitting the million um, mark, uh, pound mark, I guess. Uh, is there any reason why last year, because it seemed like you were uh, trending in the right direction the preceding three years. Did anything change last year? Well, we had uh, several large parcels um, on the Paradise side of town that were doing tremendous amount of work. I think this commission may know it quite well. Um, and that gentleman was doing a tremendous amount of eucalyptus removal. Uh, we've asked to see if he's going to be coming back this year because we like seeing that stuff removed, uh, sort of the neighborhood. But um, it's really a guess. It depends on if it's cut slash, which is lighter versus large branch and stumps, that kind of thing. So it's a it's a guessing game. All right, thank you. Yeah. All right, anything else? Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll open this up to the uh, public for public comment. Um, is there anyone, again, at present in person or online who has, who wishes to speak to this agenda item? I don't see anyone um, here with us, any speakers? online chair williams there's no public comment from zoom okay well i will close the public comment period and return this to the um uh and there's no need for the applicant to return <laughs> no questions to um, return to the, the commission commissioners for deliberation uh, and thoughts um commission vice commissioner amir yeah sure um yeah from my perspective it's uh, fairly straightforward um i think this has been a great addition to the town in the past four or five years, um, addressing some of the issues since the fires. Uh, and even, even though the million has not been reached, I think it's been widely successful, you know, and I don't think that any of the changes here, uh, of adding, you know, the, uh, midweek pickup is, is really, uh, that significant. And, uh, and I'm definitely, you know, supportive here of, uh, of the suggestion. Thank you. I I just echo uh, Vice Chair Amir's comments. Uh, definitely think that this is very valuable to the community. Uh, fits in well with our general plan and what we're trying to do. And um, uh, certainly, I think the extra day to clean up and make sure that things are uh, out of the way is very important. So um, I would be supportive as well. Thank you, Commissioner Sai. 
Yeah, I agree. I think that this um, is consistent with what we discussed before. It, it fits with Section 1652.040D um, Delta as it relates to the considerations we have to um, keep in mind with the relationship of the location proposed to the service, the compatibility of the design, in this case, it being a temporary one, um, the 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 probability of impairment to the architectural integrity and character of the zoning district. I don't think there is any, and there's been no evidence of it. I think clearly th these periodic chipper days are, um, are are vested in the interest of the protection of the public interest in health and safety. Um, and I think there is a continuing need for uh, in the community for these additional uh, types of uses. So I'm I'm happy to make a motion to um, to adopt the resolution as proposed. Terrific. Um, I'll, I would second that motion, and I just wanted to, you know, reiterate, uh, echo the sentiments of fellow commissioners that this is an, an incredible benefit to the community, and I really appreciate all the collaboration and the work across agencies as well um, uh, to make this happen. And I'm, I was, I'm really delighted to hear that in two years you've you've had no issues. I know some folks had concerns when we first looked at this, at this, and I really commend you for working through that and um, just, have, you know, wish you all all the success in the future. Uh, and thank you for the contribution. So I've seconded the motion and then said, and then carried on with some words. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the motion carries uh, unanimously. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, let's move on to um, public hearing item number two. Um, and again, I'll sort of describe this item a bit. This is uh, relates to 35 Main Street downtown. It's the consideration of a conditional use permit um, to allow outdoor an outdoor eating area um, on what is private property um, for Luna Brew, Luna Blue Restaurant. This is associated with Luna Brew Blue. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, I think. Um, uh, you know, I don't, again, I don't know if there's any additional words from staff. Um, We're here for any questions that you may have. Um, I think it's pretty clear in the staff report um, prior to you, if you decide to adopt the resolution, um, please give me a moment to read something into the record with respect to indemnification. Otherwise, we have no other comments. But we do have Janie Alsop, who did the work on this project with us today. Terrific. Um, so uh, this is an opportunity to ask questions. I just, the same question I had um, related to chipper days, have there, I, I saw in the staff report that this has worked, has been happening, um, uh, outdoor dining on this adjacent private property. And as I understand it, there has, there have been no issues or complaints. That's correct. Um, there are, there's late mail also that has been provided that actually provides support from members of the community for this use. Thank you. Um, any other questions for staff? No. And uh, so I, I, there's no app presentation today, so we can just go. F oh, uh, either the applicant would like to say a few words. So please, yes, please come up. And if you could just just state your name for the record, and uh, and yeah. My name is Crystal yeah. Azarella. Renzo Azarello. Ah, yes, and do you speak into the microphone because we um uh, oh we need to capture it on the record. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it helps us here. You know, some of us yeah. are getting older. Not all of us. <sighs> um. So thank you. So the applicant has handed us a letter. Um, and I don't know if I should read this into the record or. I think you have to read it into the record since it was not part of the package. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So this is a letter from Luna Blue um, with today's date. And it, I'm just going to read it. It's, it's short. Dear Town of Tiburon, please see our menu. We have offered one hour validated parking to all our guests since day one. Our landlady, Ms. Zielinski, suggested it. In 2023, we purchased $8,000 worth of parking, which covers 4,000 hours. We are open 38 hours a week, which is 19, uh, 1,976 total hours a year. As such, our parking covers two cars full-time during our full open hours, similar to th three spots without full-time occupation. 
we can cover more if our guests require it. Many of our regular walk, many of our regulars walk from the surrounding areas, so do not require it. Yours faithfully, Crystal, Crystal Azzarello, owner and Renzo Azzarello, owner. Um, and we also have a copy of the menu which states the, refers to the one hour parking validation. Um, thank you. Uh, did you um, wish to, to, to say anything further? I just wanted to thank the town of Tiburon for enabling us to utilize the space during the COVID situation. And we appreciate the opportunity to apply for the conditional use permit today. So thank you very much. Yeah, nothing else to add. Thank you. Um, just, I have a quick question on the, just there is a discussion in the staff report about a lease lease to supply those additional parking spaces. Is that what you're referring to by the purchasing of? Yeah, I just wanted to um, explain that we do already offer the parking. So I was hoping that this would alleviate that concern. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for coming out. Yes. And if I may, I think that once we've reviewed this, I think it does meet those conditions. Terrific. Yeah. For additional parking. It's for the parking that they have to have for their space. I think that they comply. And that's because with the additional outdoor dining, there's additional patrons that you have, have had and, and will have. And so that Im implicates the so it's the zoning square you know, footage and yeah. what we would call quote unquote a more intensive occasion. But I think that that meets Helpful. the intent of what we are trying to do. Yes. Terrific. Thank you so much. Any questions? All right. Yes. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I Commissioner Sai. Yes. Do, I do have a question. So, um, for the outdoor space that y'all have been using to date, um, do you have um, amplified sound, music, things like that that no. are being used there? No. Okay. And have you received any? I mean, I know there have been no complaints submitted to us or, le or letters in opposition. There have only been letters in support. Have you, um, ha has that been your experience um, broadly with community and, and neighbors? Yeah, the majority of people that come in, they enjoy that side of the deck and um, it's definitely very popular in the summertime. Can, can you tell us about um, what your... Uh, discussions have been with your immediate neighbors because the well and I guess I, I mean that in two ways the first is the space at issue is actually the space that belongs to the contiguous neighbor next door is that right so can you describe what that those discussions have been like in terms of your ability to continue to use that space are you paying for it for example so that's one and then the second is putting aside the the owner of that space what have the interactions been with your neighbors um, either at the hotel on the other side with Sam's on the other side and, and just those interactions. So our interactions with the business owner, he that owns 39 Main Street, he was in immediate support of us. And he said, as long as it's okay with the tenant that that, that actually pays for the patio space, if he is okay with it, then he is also. And uh, he is supportive we have not paid him until very recently probably the last few months and it's a small amount um so i feel as if it's only fair and right that since we're taking their space we're only there when they're not in the office because their office hours are different to ours mm. being open so we don't clash uh, we've spoken with Connor, he's one of the owners of Sam's, and he said that he has no issues with us personally. Um, I believe that he has represented the consortium of owners, so he may he may have brought that up to the town, but that's nothing personal. It's just mm. to represent the financial people. Other businesses around, I don't believe that they have any issues at all. We. We all understand that business business is very difficult right now. And the fact that everyone is able to continue makes us happy. We want to build a strong network here. And Sam's is an institution. I would come here when I lived in the city and take the ferry across. So I'm a big fan of Sam's. I think it, we together put Tiburon on the map. And unless 
we have open businesses, then it makes it very hard. Yeah, about the hotel, probably they even support us because they send the business all the time. Yeah, they always yeah. recommend us. Yeah. So we understand they support us in that way. Great. And I just wanted to also say we've just been awarded from Lux Life magazine of 2024, the number one Italian seafood restaurant in California. Thank you. I, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, congratulations, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, any, any other questions before we open this up for public comment? No. Okay. See none here. I will thank you so much. You may be seated and we'll give the public an opportunity to, to weigh in if they would like to. Anyone here with us? Let's start with the folks in the room who wish to speak. Okay. Seeing none here. Anyone? No public comments. No, the Zoom no audience. public comments. Okay. So once again, we'll be closing the public comment period and returning back to the commission for comment. And I'll start on my other end here with Commissioner Sai. You know, my I guess I have I have a question for staff, which is, um, Dana, what have you heard from any of the neighbors about this? Um, we haven't received any complaints. Um, we have received um, some questions as to why they get to stay there, um, and are they going to have amplified music or things like that? But since we've put out the notices. Um, I haven't heard anything back from any of the neighbors, like the any of the businesses. So it doesn't seem to be a concern that would warrant either someone being here in the middle of the day or providing me with a written dialogue. Sam's did reach out to ask the question about it. And I told them what the process was going to be. And I haven't heard anything since that time. What, what was their question? Was it a kind of ministerial as it relates to just the mechanical process for the CUP application? Yeah. Like, why do they get to have that out there kind of thing? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's more <laughs> it's of a, a question and a comment. It's a up. question and a comment. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, people get to apply for conditional use permits and we go to the planning commission to decide whether or not we have uh, reviewed the project in its completeness and also applied conditions appropriately. And then it's up to the planning commission to decide. And, and, then, and, as, yeah. and as I understand it, this um, the resolution and the application doesn't involve, does not involve amplified sound. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. You know, look, I, my, my viewpoint on this for the rest of the commission is um, I think this is consistent with an approach that the commission has taken historically over the past few years to try to uh, facilitate and promote business in a smart way. One that um, does not divorce the importance of um smart regulation, but also done in such a way that it it actually does promote, I think, business um, and bring people in. And and as a as a consumer myself, I guess it it does seem to me that when you add the only the only better thing than having one business on a street is having two or four or five. So it does seem to me that adding um, more ability for people to come and visit uh, downtown Tiburon is a positive thing. The, the questions that I've been asking all relate to some of the issues we are familiar with on the commission, ones that come up a lot, it's it's material to me that we've not heard any complaints, not that a complaint means that a CUP gets approved or not approved, but it is significant to me the absence of complaints as it relates to uh, some of the things that we've historically looked at and this resolution, rather the application does not involve amplified sound. So it's a set of issues we actually don't have to address. So I'm prepared to, um, to vote in favor if there's a motion for this application. Terrific. Uh, Commissioner Woodward. Um, I'll, I'll be prepared to make that motion, but uh, I will uh, second Commissioner Sai's uh, comments and just say, you know, I think the, this particular location has not been able to benefit from the outdoor uh, eating in the other direction on the street due to the sidewalks. And so having this access to a patio is a big deal for them. And, and as we know, it has been uh, difficult to keep restaurants in business downtown. Um, so I think that this is a great uh, use of the space and a good compromise and, and fantastic that the neighbors are all pitching in to make this available and possible. But I, I do think it meets our criteria uh, uh, around uh, 1652040D uh, and the and the ones that we have to think through uh, and clearly is in the public interest and I think it's the safety of the community. So, 
I'm prepared to make that motion. Excellent. So I'll just we'll just go down the line here. I, I, I concur with my fellow commissioners. I um, absolutely think this is in furtherance of the general plan and consistent with the um, a zoning ordinance. And, and I feel comfortable making the findings that we're required to make. Um, and think this is not only does it enhance, uh, uh, improve sort of the town, well, it helps businesses and improves the town's economic vitality and um, benefits our uh, uh, restaurants and commercial district, which is so important. It's just it provides a tremendous benefit to residents and an, an opportunity to have a really nice evening out. Um, and so I am very supportive and, and really am so, again, so delighted to hear that, you know, uh, just the relationships that you have managed to cultivate are so strong. Um, and we know this is an engaged community um, and, and, and the neighbors, you know, are supportive of um, restaurant activity um, and also will come to us with concerns when they have them. So very meaningful that none have been expressed. So I'll turn it to Commissioner Sai. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I, I uh, concur with my fellow commissioners. I mean, I think that we've been um, always trying to promote business downtown and uh, I think this is very consistent um, as long as it meets kind of the environmental and safety issues, which this certainly does. Um, you know, I think we've, we've all been many years on the commission and when people, um, when there are complaints, uh, people definitely show up and people definitely express this is not a town that is uh that people don't show their voices uh so the fact that there are none and that actually people support it i think just uh confirms um that uh this is definitely something that is in the interest of the town and hopefully in the interest of uh, downtown business as well so i'll let commissioner woodward make the motion <laughs> oh she Oh, I'm sorry. You need to read some language into so, the record. Yes. Before you yes. adopt a resolution, I'd like to read um, our indemnity clause because it wasn't in the resos for these uh, CUPs. So um, if this approval is challenged by a third party, the property owner and, and or applicant will be responsible for defending against this challenge. The property owner and or applicant agrees to defend, indemnify, and hold the town of Tiburon harmless from any cost claims or liabilities arising from the approval, including without limitation, any award of attorney's fees that might result from a third party challenge. So that was not in the original resolution and it needs to be included as part of the um, approval. That was in the resolution for the Tiburon. That's correct, <laughs> but it was not in the resolution for the remaining ones. And that's something that the applicant understands that that was just an omission from the draft that was provided to us. Yes. Yep. Um, okay. Terrific. So, with that um, addition to the uh, draft resolution, I I move to approve the resolution, including the additional language. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Again, unanimous support. Uh, thank you very much. And yep. um, we'll turn it. <laughs> yeah, and we'll turn to the next. Um, agenda item, which is, uh, let me read that. So that is, um, relates to another restaurant just across the main street, 38 main street. Again, this is the consideration of a conditional use permit to permit, um, an outdoor eating area also on private property. Um, and this is, uh, for salt and pepper, um, at 38 main street. Uh, so, um, uh, just a similar question to staff, you know, I think uh, we have the staff report in front of us, but again, uh, community feedback, um, you know, we have not seen any letters. Um, I haven't seen any know. letters from mm -hmm. either pro or for or against or whatever, which is actually kind of the same thing as saying people are in support, because I do believe that is true, that the community is very engaged. And if they do have an issue with this, um, they would be communicating with us. I haven't had any communication. I don't believe Janie has as well. Have you? There has been no comments received from the public on, on this item at 38 Main Street. And the landlord as well, ACV? I mean, no, no. they've been, they're, they're they've been working to, with them. They're here, this, okay. they're here today. <laughs> they're here. I That's think right. actually right now it'd be good just to note that while there have been no comments, the applicant is going to speak to this. Great. But I will just say that we do have a signed lease agreement for three parking spaces, which satisfies the conditions related to parking 
um, for this particular Thank use. You. That and was... I, they'll speak to that. So I okay. just wanted to make sure you knew we do have a signed agreement. And that was can... my next question. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for sure. offering that. Any questions before we turn to the applicant? No. All right. Let's uh, let's have the applicants uh, come up and uh, uh, tell us more. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to read first time here. Just your name for the record. Yes. Paulino Monterroso. Uh, so my name is Paulino Monterroso. I am the owner of Salt and Pepper Restaurant in downtown Tiburon. I want to be beginning and thanking everyone uh, here today to taking the time to listen to this proposal. I have been serving the community community of Tiburon for uh, Tiburon and Belvedere for over 30 years, more than 30 years I've been here. Uh, and I haven't seen how families come together to enjoy outdoor seating while they dining because Tiburon is a destination location. Having outdoor seating spaces allow visibility of a lively and friendly environment. The Tiburon is and Alba has been a spe spectacular city. The outdoor seating will continue to allow adequate access to the people to walk through. I also uh, have added to the parking agreement, which one she, uh, she mentioned. And uh, I appreciate your support to keep outdoor seating on the alley of Salem Pepper. It's very important to continue serving our community. And thank everyone for continued support to a small business in downtown Tiburon. That's all I can see now. Thank, thank you. Me. Yes. Uh, my name is Carol Carter. I work for ANC Ventures. I'm the portfolio advocate. Can, can you talk yeah. into the mic because we need to record this? Jeez. Thank you. Do you need me to repeat anything? Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, we want to thank the Planning Commission and everyone at the town of Tiburon for their assistance and support surrounding this application. Um, we are here in support of granting a permanent CUP to Salt and Pepper for their outdoor seating. Um, we just feel that Main Street and the downtown Tiburon area are well suited for outdoor dining and think that we can all agree the benefits are numerous. Uh, it offers a refreshing and new experience, both for locals and tourists who are dining at Salt and Pepper, uh, provides extra customer seating, which results in increased revenue and more people downtown and more people equals more business for everybody. Um, so from enhancing the vibrancy of the downtown area, as well as promoting the economic stability of the restaurant tenants, we feel that approving the continued use of outdoor dining at Paulino Space is gonna be beneficial for everyone. And as the staff report noted, um, based on Tiburon Municipal Code requirements, additional parking was required to remain in compliance. So we granted uh, salt and pepper an amendment to his lease, granting him three permitted spots at five main, uh, sorry, five beach road, which is a parking lot that we own. And so essentially we're hoping that, or our thought is that his employees can utilize that parking. Mm -hmm. And then that will open up three more spaces for patrons or people coming downtown. So I guess in, in conclusion, thank you again for your time and consideration. And we just want all of our downtown tenants to thrive and we're in support of the CUP application. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. Do we have any questions for the applicant? No questions. So thank you so much. I'll, you can sit back down and I'll open this up for public comment as we've been doing. <laughs> Uh, so again, um, anyone here who wishes to speak, uh, yes, please step up and state your name for the record. And you have three minutes, which, oh, I'm getting called. Hi, everyone. My name is Brittany Hanning. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I wanted to, as a homeowner that's living on Corinthian Island, as well as being a business owner that's newly on Arc Row, I wanted to express, of course, for Polino and for Luna Blue, and I'm sure there will be other uh, restaurants that come up for opportunity as well. Uh, I just really support the, the whole concept of outdoor dining. I think that it's really paramount for our community to have the aesthetic, you know, maybe even the illusion of vibrance of people, you know, talking and dining and um, just being a really strong community together. Because frankly, when people are walking by, driving by, like I will do multiple times a day, it's like, oh, Tiburon's, you know, it's happening in Tiburon today, or, oh, where is everyone? And I think that a lot of that can stem from uh, people that are just 
outside enjoying our beautiful town. Um, I also think that uh, this is a bit of an aside, but as a member of the San Francisco Yacht Club and the Corinthian Yacht Club, I think that those are some of the most spectacular venues on the peninsula, but they're private clubs. And these sorts of opportunities are ways for both neighbors and people that are visiting to have that kind of waterfront experience or that kind of European alfresco dining experience. So uh, I, again, I thought that there might be people I was, you know, beating off or oh my God, uh, beating <laughs> away with a stick. Wow, pardon me, please don't put that in the record. Um, but clearly I think everyone's really in support and I am delighted to see that. So thank you for your time and uh, yeah, much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank yes, you question. Marco. Made to measure communications. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you so much for the, for your words. Anyone else here? Okay, I don't see anyone in the audience. Anyone online? No Zoom up. Okay. No, no Zoom no speakers. Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll uh, close the public comment and again return to the commission. Uh, commissioner, yes. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, I, I think similar to the Luna Blue uh, application, uh, this is also very consistent, I think, from what the uh, um, what the planning commission is supporting, kind of promoting businesses downtown. I think this also meets kind of the safety requirements. I'm glad to see that, you know, also the parking has been addressed as well. Um, uh, and uh, you know, I think this is very consistent to trying to promote uh, business downtown. Uh, and again, the fact that we haven't heard any neighbors, any complaints, et cetera, kind of uh, reiterates kind of the same position. So um, I'll be brief and I, I, I would support this. Great, I'll pounce it over to Commissioner Sai. You know, I, I, it's interesting. I see this as different, but I think the result's the same. Um, I, I happen to agree that there's something about the public facing um, access to restaurants where you can actually see people um, sitting on, on the sidewalks, near the sidewalks, adds an important dimension to the town. I happen to believe that that uh, what I'll call alleyway between the parking lot and movie theater to um, uh, Main Street, that that little area next to Salt and Pepper is is probably one of the most charming spots about Tiburon because it has this very unique feel of what you see in a lot of other kinds of old cities, mostly in Europe, for example. I think it's it's a super charming spot. Um, I think it's great that there was enough creativity that the pandemic kind of um, uh, foisted on everyone to come up with some alternative ways to, to bring in some business. Um, every time I'm walking by there, I, I usually see someone I know eating there and it's it's part of the charm, I think, of what the restaurant brings. Um, so, and, and I, I happen to believe it fits in with, uh, consistent with our other um, application, um, section 16-52.040D um, meets the factors there. Um, and I'm prepared to to vote in favor of this application as well. Thank you, Commissioner Woodward. Uh, I'll keep it brief and say I'm supportive as well uh, with the comments that were made. And uh, I think Commissioner Sai, we learned that that's a Paseo, uh, between, <laughs> <laughs> which I never would have known if, if not for one of these, uh, you know, our, our architects uh, telling us about it, but agreed that that uh, kind of European charm that brings to the town is so nice. Uh, so. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I, again, I wholeheartedly agree with my fellow commissioners and support the application um, and acknowledge that I've eaten a lot of salt and pepper um, meals, uh, many salt, salt and pepper meals, and have enjoyed the Paseo very much. I do think it's incredibly vibrant and um, just a wonderful experience. Uh, and I appreciate Commissioner Sai uh, reminding us that we um, have findings to make and kind of uh, uh, speaking to that. Um, and uh, so I know there's some, I, I, so I will be prepared to make the motion um, adopting the resolution with uh, some additional language to be read right now. The additional language shall read as follows. If this approval is challenged by a third party, the property owner and or applicant will be responsible for defending against this challenge. The property owner and or applicant agrees to defend, indemnify, and hold the town of Tiburon harmless from any costs, claims, or liabilities arising from the approval, including without limitation, any award of attorney's fees that might result from third party challenge. So I'll make that motion to adopt the resolution with the additional language. I'll second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. And again, thank many thanks to all of our restaurants for keeping things up and keep surviving the pandemic and, and taking such good care of us. Okay. Um, so as I understand it, the next item on the agenda relating to one Blackfield Drive Suite 7 has with, been withdrawn from the agenda. So we'll move on to the to the next agenda. Uh, now, I know um, Commissioner Sai has to depart at some point. I don't know how much time this next item will take. Um, so perhaps so if, we if continue. This is a, another CUP for an existing okay. retail center with wine bar. Um, I think um, you have 17 minutes. <laughs> so we need to be- What do you think? Let's go. We need go. to be Let's go. insights. Let's go. Uh, uh, okay, so the next item is, um, again, is also on Blackfield Drive, uh, Suite 14. This is the consideration of an application filed by Frederick DaCosta and Emily Lund for a conditional use permit to modify the use of, a, of that location to a wine bar. Um, it's uh, pre previously this was a bank, um, and the proposed hours of operation would be Wednesday through Sunday from noon to 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, this is in the neighborhood commercial zone. That's the zoning. This is at the Cove Shopping Center. Um, and uh, if the uh, if there's a staff report um, or an applicant presentation, again, I, you know, I don't know that you've had anyone weigh in on this application. There, um, there is no staff report prepared. It's pretty straightforward, but we're here to answer questions. We've received no comments from the public on this application. Great. And, the, and just as we have had the benefit of a written staff report that we have looked at prior to this meeting. Any questions for staff? Yeah, I have one, one question. The, um, the Italian restaurant in the Cove, um, is it uh, open also until nine or do you know? Is, is it open when? until nine o'clock as well do you know you, what you said the the piccolo yeah the piccolo yeah do you know what the hours of operation of that is i can find out for you because i took photos of all of the hours of operation okay. i just don't, <laughs> don't want to say something without sure. making sure that it's correct we'll come back to you on I, that okay question. i'll confirm yeah thanks any other questions uh, okay, there are no questions here so i'll um give the applicant an opportunity to speak if you so wish you don't have to Okay, n no applicant presentation. So, um, so I'll open this up for public comment. Uh, yes, there is someone who wishes to speak. So, yes, uh, please state your name. Um, my name is Natasha Drecker, and I work with Jim Ressler, who's also here, my dad. And we're the property managers. And I just want to say, um, I live locally. I'm at the Cove all the time. And I have gotten a lot of great feedback from people who've heard about the wine bar coming, both regular customers, other tenants in the center who are like, oh, this is going to be great. And so I just wanted to share with you. I haven't heard anything negative, just only positive comments. So thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Manager. Yeah. Uh -oh. And then, oh. Go ahead. Uh, of that particular building or of the entire Cove? The, co the whole Cove Shopping Center. The Cove Shopping Center. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Anything else before you? Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course, of Sorry. course. Yeah. You're going to regret having sat in there. <laughs> um, are, are there any other empty storefronts in that um, shopping center? Currently, um, with uh, the wine bar going in, um, there there's building... the old florist shop, I guess. But... Yeah, and then that one's being um, a ballet studio is coming in. That was item number, that preceding item, which um, we didn't need to address. Yeah, we're with this, we're going to be entirely full, which we're really thrilled about. It's been a long couple of years <laughs> since COVID. That was, the, yeah. that was the Bank of Marin, I think, right? The Bank yeah. of Marin, yeah. Great. Um, so that, I think that concludes the questioning. I did... No, no, this is wonderful. Yeah, I did. Um, I looked up the hours of operation for the restaurant, and it does appear to close at 9 p.m. Oh, so that's great. confirmed. <laughs> yes. Um, a little multitasking back here. Uh, so uh, again, give the public an opportunity to speak. Is there anyone here with us who wishes to speak on this issue? Nobody in person. Anyone? Nobody on Zoom either. Nobody on Zoom. So we'll close the public comment period and come back to the commission. And I'll start with Commissioner Woodward. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks. Uh, so, you know, this is, it's great to see another uh, place come to town. And in particular, 
I think it's been, uh, for those of us who live closer to downtown, it's been really nice having the numerous wine bars uh, and wine places to stop in uh, at night. And I think having one up by the Cove will be great because it will just obviously alleviate maybe some of the traffic and some of the potential. Um, I'm sure none of us would, but you know, for the drinking and driving. So now maybe people can walk to the neighborhood places. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that uh, for sure is in the interest of the public safety. And, um, and I think that this meets our general conditions for trying to uh, create more uh, retail and restaurants and experiences for the town people. So um, I do recognize that uh, adding in a place serving alcohol may come with some additional scrutiny, but I think um, the location wise and the hours of when they expect the impact to be um, actually will work out well for that center. So uh, I, with that, I pass it on. Great, we'll pass it on to Commissioner Sy. Um, I'm I'm prepared to be in favor of, of this application as well. I've, you know, living here the number of years that I have, I've always viewed the Cove Shopping Center as the tip of the spear for Tiburon because it is almost literally the first thing that you see in the technical part of where Tiburon starts. Um, and it really does with about 10 years ago with the addition of Nugget really has, I think, um, preserved that shopping center. I think there probably was some questions about what would happen with a new uh, grocery store going into place. And I think the theory was, although there are much smarter folks who would know this, that you have one good anchor tenant it will really help draw in others that will be complimentary. I'm in probably the Cove five out of seven days per week uh, because I, I, I'm, I'm there for various of the things there, not the least of which is going to the grocery store. I love the idea that there's a complimentary place that would go next to a very good new restaurant that's, that's sitting there too. In addition to across the way, the Italian restaurant, that's very good too. Um, and so I think that it, it uh, will be a good addition to that shopping center and for the folks who live in the immediate environs right there by the cove. I think it's consistent with the um, the factor set forth in section 1652.040D. Um, and I think that this would be um, a very good use of the space that's otherwise vacant right now. So I wish the applicants good luck uh, with their business, but I'm prepared to vote in favor. Thank you, Commissioner Amir. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I, I also spend a fair amount of time in the Cove. I actually live not far. Um, I actually remember the Blockbuster that used to be, that covered where Pete, the, the Blockbuster, <laughs> that I think covered Pete, Bank of Marin, and Flybird, right? I think that covered that whole space at the time. So um, it was uh, certainly a different uh, a different era, I guess, at this point. Um, and uh, and I, I think it actually is is a really nice addition to the uh, you know the fact you have Pete's next door that you know pretty much closed it down towards the afternoon and now you have you know another activity in a way to bring people to the shopping center there. Uh, in in addition, the fact that there's there's plenty of parking there, there's never really a parking issue. Um, I think that that's um, that's also something that's a real plus uh, for the applicant here. Uh, and uh, and I do believe that um, it's good. It's good also to spread around a bit uh, some of the uh, you know food uh, activity around town. I mean, there's a lot of concentration, of course, downtown. And I think the Cove, uh, 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 a business like this, I think will actually help a number of the other businesses that actually exist there as well. Uh, so uh, and the fact again. No complaints, no neighbors, uh, no other businesses that uh, had any comments. I think that just uh, further supports it. So um, I would support this as well. Right. Um, so the benefit of being chair is I get to just embrace all the wise words of my colleagues. Um, I, too, support the application uh, for all of the reasons that have been articulated, which I don't need to repeat. I do love that this uh, is it just brings in a different type of, um, of uh, use. Um, and there's uh, the variety in terms of the timing of use. So I think that will work out really well and keep that shopping center very vibrant throughout the day and into the evening and provide some great um, activities for, for in particular for lo the people who live nearby and others. Um, so uh, again, I think it you know meets all of the um, criteria that we look at under the municipal code. Um, and I would, if someone wants to make a, maybe Commissioner Mayor or... Uh, do we need the indemnification? Okay. We do. 
I'm sorry, I got to do read it one more time. I should know it by heart by now. Yep. <laughs> If this approval is challenged by a third party, the property owner and or applicant will be responsible for defending against this challenge. The property owner and or applicant agrees to defend, indemnify, and hold the town of Tiburon harmless from any costs, claims, or liabilities arising from the approval, including without limitations, any award of attorney's fees that might result from the third party challenge. I'll make a motion to approve the application uh, with the, including the indemnification language. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Um, and the meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might. Would you agree?